Ms. Legalista here. Thank you for joining the video. We're going to be talking about medical debt, medical credit cards, and some of the risks that you may not know about. Sometimes people are finding the ease of medical credit card, medical credit. Oh, let me start back over. Ms. Legalista here. Welcome to the video. We're going to be talking about credit cards that are used for medical services, procedures, dental services that you may need, and how you can now put that on a medical credit card. Well, some people don't exactly understand some of the risks that may be involved with this. It's kind of new, but it's definitely expanding. So let's hear a little bit more about this and some of the red flags that you may want to watch out for, including this whole idea of balloon interest, deferred interest payments. Healthcare costs are rising and the result is more people are going into debt to pay for care. Americans owe in the neighborhood of $220 billion in medical debt and the government has proposed rules to prevent medical debt from hurting your credit score. However, that does not include medical credit card debt, something more people are finding themselves falling into. It's one reason consumer advocates warn that patients should think twice before signing on that particular dotted line. Senior, senior consumer investigative correspondent Anna Werner is here with what you need to know about all this. Anna, good morning to you. Yeah, good morning, Tony. You know, these medical credit cards have been increasing in popularity as a way for patients to pay for medical expenses like hearing, vision, dentistry, even hospital services. But consumer advocates say some of those cards could end up hurting your credit score or leaving you in deeper debt. I applied and put the exact amount of what my procedure cost. Mary Imanina was so concerned about her experience with a medical credit card, she highlighted it on TikTok. I'm going to tell you what happened so this never happens to you. Imanina says it began last year when she went to an orthodontist to get Invisalign braces. The price, $4,500 up front. She says the office gave her a couple payment plan options. Put $1,000 down and get a plan through the doctor's office, or she could sign up for what's called care credit that offered no down payment plus no interest for 18 months. You don't have to put anything down, which is really what caught my attention. Care Credit, owned by Synchrony Financial, is advertised as a way to pay for health and wellness at over 270,000 locations across the United States. The company's website does mention it's a credit card, but because it's often pitched during doctor's appointments by health professionals, some consumers, including Imanina, don't realize it's a credit card like any other. I didn't so, okay, let's stop there. When you are in your doctor's office, I'm just gonna ask you this. And this comes up and they say, how do you want to pay for the procedure? Been there before, needed a surgery. It's like, how do you plan to pay for this? Well, here's my medical insurance. Here's my health insurance card. Typically, there may be some things that aren't covered. So you figure out how you're going to pay for that. Sometimes you got to pay for this stuff up front. In this case, $4,500 for her in Invisalign or Invisible Braces and she's trying to figure out what the payment options are. Now, if you're sitting there then in the office and they tell you, hey, there are a couple of things that you can do. We have a couple of options for you to consider. One, of course, you, is you can just pay them outright. Another is we can set up a payment plan here through our office. And this is what that plan looks like. And then here we have this other option where you can go with something called care credit. They handle all of the financing and payments for you. Are you at that moment in time going to pull out your phone and say, well, let me go to the website. Let me read about this company. Let me pull up the fine print, make sure I understand what exactly this is. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure there are plenty of people who are going to want to come back and figure out whether or not that's something that they want to do. And there are some people who are going to want to pull that up. But some people may not and may not realize that this is a regular credit card, which comes with some other things that you need to think about. Listen to what she says. Didn't really know that it was an actual credit card. I thought for some reason it would come out uh, on my credit report as like a loan of some sort. After making her first payment, Imanina says, she checked her credit report and was surprised to see. It dropped my credit score 50 points. She says the card appeared on her report as a nearly maxed out credit card, hurting her score. 
Well, that's because she got it for medical service. Do you, so think about the difference there in terms of usage. When you're getting just a regular credit card, maybe you have it for emergency purposes. Maybe you have it for vacation so that you can put those things on the card in case something happens and you need to dispute it. And so it's sort of this backup. You don't have it maxed out, but maybe it's at 10 or 15 or 20 percent. But with a medical credit card, the whole reason for you to get it is to be able to get that full amount to pay the party who is providing you the service. The negative aspect of that, the consequence that happens as a result is it hits you as a negative because it looks like now that you've got this maxed out credit card and you do because you got it only for the amount of services that you need. You're not going to necessarily say, yes, I want to get a, a medical credit card for $20,000 when I only need four or $5,000, just so that it will not impact my score in a negative way. No, I don't think a lot of people are thinking it through that way, not realizing that it's going to hit your credit report in a negative way because it's going to look like you've maxed out that card and it's going to change your ratio there. Not only that, but she says she realized the proposed payment schedule set up by Care Credit wouldn't cover her total costs in the 18-month promotional period. Now, again, this comes back to us being vigilant, us being the ones to say and recognize that this is for them. This is Synchrony Bank. This is whatever bank that's financing this, that's providing this. They are not setting this up out of the goodness of their hearts. We know that we have to pay interest when we borrow money like this. The trick, though, is the number that you give me, you know, what is that number that you're giving me? Is it the number that's going to match the 18 month period? Or is it in there someplace else in some fine print that says, hey, in order for you to actually pay it off in 18 months, here's the amount that you need to pay. Now, I don't know. I'm just bringing this up as something for you to think about if this is something that you want to do. When you get the paperwork and you look at it, is that paperwork clear to you about what your payment's going to be or going to need to be in order for you to pay it off in 18 months and not have to then get this whole interest tacked back on because you didn't pay it off in the 18 months. Meaning she'd eventually owe interest as well. If I was paying the only the minimum payment, the interest would have applied to my account. An interest rate of 32.99%. The payment they initially gave you that they automatically calculated was not enough to keep you in the interest-free zone? Okay, so again, this shouldn't sound real new to us, right? Because we've seen this with regular credit cards to the extent that they say, hey, we'll give you this free promotional period. And during this period, if you pay it all off, then you don't have to pay that interest. If, if you go over that time period, then not only are you going to have to go back and pay that interest that was deferred or that we weren't going to ask of you, you now get bumped up to some new interest rate. Because remember, that was the promotional interest rate. So you get hit twice. So sometimes we forget about that. And again, I think this all had to come from the idea of this was being thought of as a medical service. And I think sometimes we're thinking it's going to be different when, in fact, it's not. It's just Synchrony Bank. It's just another financial institution. Same product just different name. Okay. No, it wasn't. She's right. There online in the fine print of the credit card agreement, it says the required minimum monthly payments may or may not pay off your purchase by the end of the promotional period. And if it's not paid in full by then, the company will tack on a lump sum interest charge when the promotion period runs out. What do you think of that? I think it's pretty sneaky. Medical credit cards can be extremely harmful to consumers. Chi Chi Wu is with the National Consumer Law Center. Her group warns medical credit cards can have higher interest rates than other credit cards and yes, calls those deferred interest let's, let's backtrack for just a second. Yes, it was 30 something percent. That is pretty high. That is pretty high. She probably could have gotten a personal loan or done something entirely different, saved her money for a little bit longer. And, you know, so 
I don't want you to think I'm beating her up. I'm not beating her up. I'm actually thankful that she did the video so that we can highlight it, that this CBS Mornings news report is covering this too, so that we can highlight it and talk about some of these different ways that financial products are being pitched to us so that we know what to look for. It's just so that we become more informed, more educated, that we're vigilant in terms of what we're doing with our money and our finances, making sure we aren't being scammed and making sure that even when it's something legitimate like this, that we understand all of the things that we need to be looking out for. All right, let's see if I can find my way back to where Trish I was. Plans deceptive. Just a little bit here. Consumer Law Center. Her group warns medical credit cards can have higher interest rates than other credit cards and calls those deferred interest plans deceptive. There's no interest for six months or one year, but you have to pay off the entire balance by the end of that six months or one year. And if you don't pay off the balance, interest is accruing in the background and it'll be slapped on the account after that six months or one year, which is really can be a trap for consumers. Synchrony financial officials push back on those characterizations, telling CBS News there's nothing deceptive about Care Credit's deferred interest program, that the rules are exceptionally transparent, the deferred interest promotions are popular and well understood by consumers, and the company follows all applicable federal regulations. Now, all of those things that they have listed here may very well be true. I think the disconnect here may be that when you're sitting in a doctor's office and or dentist's office and they're saying, hey, here are a few ways that you can pay for this, pick one, that you might not do the research into this that you might have done had you been in another situation. But again, that's not the doctor's office's fault. That's not our fault. But there is a need for, I think, clear language that is very upfront and not on page four, not at the bottom of page three, not as an asterisk in a table on page five. It does make it very difficult to understand everything that's in these financial agreements, these contracts, when there's all of this language in there. I'm not blaming them, but what I'm saying is there is a need for more transparency. This says the rules are exceptionally transparent. And what they mean there is we put it in black and white on the paper. Now, you need to read through the whole thing to find it. Um, there's nothing deceptive about it. We put what the interest rate is going to be right there for you to see it. Remember, the person who's doing this news article, you saw the red line, the red circles there. You saw where she was able to go directly to the contract and point some of these things out. But you have to go through the whole contract to find it. And then you have to sit there and really understand what it is they're talking about. I said this in another video. It's the same sort of thing that happens with real estate transactions. When you see people refinance their homes, get a second loan or something of that nature. There are all of these documents that you have to sign and fill out and return back to the lender. And I have practiced real estate law before. And I will tell you that most people do not sit there and read through all of those documents. Even when they're provided the loan application in advance with everything in there, they don't. I have had very few clients sit there and pull out what they received from the broker the couple of weeks beforehand to compare it, to make sure it's the same thing. People don't do that. People don't do that. They don't necessarily have the time. They don't always understand what's in the documents. And even if they understood what's in them, they may not understand how that plays out in court. And I've said that before too. So yes, there might be nothing deceptive about it. Yes, the rules might be totally transparent. They're in black and white. Yes, the promotions might be popular and well understood because it gives people access to the services that they need. And yes, the company may be following federal regulations. You can check yes to all those boxes. It does not mean that it is in your best interest to have a medical credit card. And that's what they're saying. Take a look at all of this to see if this is something for you. But this California state senator says, Most consumers don't realize, wow, I just took out another credit card. Monique Limon is sponsoring legislation that would ban credit reporting agencies from factoring medical debt, including from medical credit cards, into a consumer's credit report or score. Medical debt shouldn't be treated the way that 
other type of debt is treated and it shouldn't be reported to a credit agency where then it can have an impact on your ability to buy a home, your ability to rent, your ability to get a car. All of these things are really key things that people need. Well, there you go. And there's some information why it's so important to think about whether or not this medical credit card is going to be the payment option for you when you walk into a dentist's office or a doctor's office and you need to have services. Now, sometimes it, you need the services. Other times there it may be elective. It's entirely up to you. So I hope this provides you with more information and understanding some of the things that you need to consider with this. I mean, did you see the high interest rate on that? That's pretty high. That is pretty high. So hopefully she was able to pay that off before she got into the situation where the interest rate came back into play. But thank her for sharing that with us and pointing some of that information out. That gives us a chance to sort of think about this and again, understand, do I want to go down this road or not? Do I want to have other choices with this? Because I'm concerned now that it may impact my credit score. Well, we'll see how this goes um, on the government side and whether or not the government is going to be able to say, hey, we're going to put a stop to that being on your credit report. Because if it's medical debt, maybe it shouldn't be. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you learned a few things about medical credit card debt and interest rates and all of that. And don't forget to subscribe. All right. Peace.